we're going to go over everything you need to know about voice over IP. This is a very powerful thing because as cell phones get more expensive and those types of deals, I think a lot of people are going to fall back on these IP phones, which are extremely affordable. And if you run a business, you're already using them. Chances are you're overpaying and this video can help you. There's a lot of pieces to this puzzle and I'm going to go over end to end. So check the timestamps down below and let's get into it. So we're going to start with our SIP provider. I'm using FlowRoute for this. If you're not using FlowRoute or you're overseas, it'll probably be a different provider, but what we're using supports hundreds of SIP providers. So pick your poison here. FlowRoute is pretty darn cheap. Right now their plans start at 50 cents per number per month and about a half a penny per minute. If you spend every waking hour talking, it ends up being like $20 a month. But with that said, uh, come into Flow Routes dashboard, sign up, grab your DID right here. This is going to be the external number that we're going to assign to our main phone system. You can have multiple DIDs and even assign those DIDs to certain extensions. The big thing that we need here is the interconnection to actually register with this one. We'll come into registration. Over here on the right, you'll see SIP credentials. Make sure you jot down the username and password as these two things are how we register the line. But with all that said, now that we got all our DIDs, those connections set with our SIP provider, we're ready to move on to the next step. I'm using 3CX for this one, just for ease of use. It isn't super easy one to set up, which we're doing today. You get it free for a whole year. Uh, anything past two years, about $200, which is less than most PBX boxes. However, if you do want to go with on-prem and you want to do it for like a test environment, I highly recommend doing it in a Raspberry Pi, which would be free forever. Uh, I'll link that video up top here. Uh, I will go through it. It's a bit longer setup and it is a little more technically demanding. Get your free year, sign up with your name and email address, and then log in to the consumer portal. In the portal... You basically just go my, my subscription, install subscription, and just say hosted and just set it up for me. And they just do all the legwork. So I'm going to do a three-digit extension as that's pretty much the norm in most businesses. And we'll hit next, accept and proceed of the license agreement. And then it creates the instance. This takes about 15 minutes. So once we finish the 15-minute countdown, we are presented with this screen. This is kind of a take note, take a screenshot, whatever you can do, because you install your apps with this little QR code, or you can just click download and install it through the Play Store or App Store. You have the web client for the first extension, which is the main extension of our phone system. Note the username is going to be probably 100 for the extension, and then the password is going to be right here. And then finally, we need to configure everything before we can make and receive calls and set up probably our IP phones and those types of things with the management console. With that said, we're going to open up the management console and then we're going to do the desktop phone and then also the soft phone. And if you want to get really crazy here, you could actually install live chat directly onto your business's website as well, but I'm not going to go into that today. So over on our dashboard, this is the management console that I am using. We need to set up our first phone, which if we go to users, this is the main user. This would probably be your receptionist or main call-in number to set it up. So we click on it and we want to install phone provisioning. A lot of stuff on this page, like mobile number, outbound caller ID, you leave blank, it'll default to what is set up in the console. Web authentication, this gives you web client, which you can see I'm downloading this desktop app to install here, but you can also assign specific numbers to this user. So anytime they call out, they'd be using that DID or anybody calling in with that DID it would go to their phone. You also have your voicemail. Make note of the PIN number because we will need the PIN number and the ext extension to provision the phone. We'll go to phone provisioning and here's the 3CX app which we could install on our desktop or our cellular device but I want to use this guy right here because I'm a bit old school and it feels a lot better than using a darn cell phone. If you're wondering what phones are supported, they do have a full supported IP phones. Fanvils are recommended and I actually recommend Fanvils. They're actually one of the cheapest, best looking IP phones on the market right now. If I had to choose a second one, the Yealink series, I really love the T48Us. I've used that a lot 
for a client site and they just look gorgeous. But you basically would just click on whatever one you want, which right now I'm using an X3U right here from Fanville, and it gives you the entire setup process. It gives you the firmware to flash onto the phone, how to actually factory reset the phone, how to provision it, all of that laid out in an easy how-to guide. But we're just gonna go ahead and do it right now. First up, I find the IP address of my phone, which if we just hit menu on the phone and hit status, it actually shows this on my phone, which is the IP address. And we just open up a browser, type that IP address in. The default username for Fanville is admin admin. Don't worry about that. It will get reset to something secure once we provision the phone. Come into the upgrade tab and then select your image file from downloads. And you can see it right here, this X3UZ. You would just select that open and then just click upgrade and it would upgrade your phone to that image file. Once all that's done, the phone's pretty much ready for be for provision. Don't close that tab yet though. We're gonna just hit add, select our phone from the models list. And this is an X3U Fanville. Then we put our Mac address, which I have to blur out. All right, and here is everything with this phone. It's been added after putting the Mac address in. Uh, come down to where it says IP phone provisioning method. You want direct SIP, stun remote. The other one's meant for SBCs and really large implementations where you need a PBX on site. Uh, so you just want to do direct SIP, which is really nice. If you have probably 20 to 30 phones and above, you might start thinking about doing a session border controller, uh, which I would use that other video I already linked to set up that instead of cho choosing PBX, you just choose SBC and then connect back to this hosted instance. But with the provisioning mode under direct SIP, it's actually ready. That's all you need to do. That's the only change you have to do for this. We'll hit OK, and that should prompt the user to install it. However, if you're doing this in a large deployment, you're not going to want to do that. You're just going to want to head and hook everything up. And then what I like to do is just pull the plower on the PoE switch and plug it back in, and it forces reboot all the devices. And then it all just loads all the firmware at once. But we're going to do it this way. Both are OK. And we're just going to hit auto provision now. Now, remember when I said, make sure we look at the voicemail password. So we'd put username 100. And then for the password, we would put that 9645 and hit OK. This will go ahead and provision the phone using just the extension number and the voicemail pin. Now, we're not quite done with this phone. We're almost to the finish line. We're pretty much done with the web interface. I can go ahead and close that out. It's already changed the username and password and reprovisioned it so it's very secure and you're good to go. Come into the management console, BLF, we need to set up the busy lamp fields. Those are the buttons on the phone. And the first one I like to do is line key. And then usually I pick a speed dial for another extension in the office for the rest of the keys. Or you can even do custom speed dial and then put like, hey, cell phone number and then just type in someone's cell phone number here. But with those busy lamp fields done, just hit OK. It'll go ahead and push that update. Usually you need to reboot that phone once to grab those new busy lamp fields so it'll look normal. So you might actually do this before provisioning the phone. Uh, so you only have to reboot those phones once. With our phone set up, we're ready to go ahead and jump into the actual SIP registration, which is saying, hey, we need to use a phone number. So we'll do that with SIP trunks. We're just going to say add SIP trunk. We're going to put our country in. And then you can see all these different hosts that we can use. We're going to just use flow route. We're going to grab our DID from flow route and just toss that guy in. With that done, remember how I said we needed those authentication numbers from earlier? This is where we put it in at. Okay, we put those in. If it's red, that means it's down. Since I just put in my username and authentication from our registrar, give it a little minute, and then we'll just hit refresh, and boom, there we go. It should come back, register is sent, and register OK. And now we're actually ready to use this number, but before we can do any inbound outbound calling, we need to set those rules. So first we'll set inbound rules, and we're gonna just make this really easy. I, I like to just do an all rule, Hey, what's the main extension everything's coming into? We're just going to do 100, which is the user. Typically for after hours, you would usually set this to a voice box for an extension. And that would usually be the main extension. And then we just hit OK. The inbound calls, we know they're all getting pushed to this phone. 
but how do we make outbound calls? Now this is where some weird stuff happens. You know, old office phones, I've set up a bunch of different phone systems in my day, and you used to have to dial nine to get out and these types of things. These are outbound rules. You can actually still set that type of weird, funky rule, but I don't do that anymore. I would just do all and then, hey, say anything with 10 digits, go ahead and append a one to. Now, obviously, if you're overseas and it's not plus one, because that's what the US extension code is, we just want to go ahead and just do route one, strip digits. We could strip off digits. If you were doing a nine, you would just put strip one digit, uh, but we don't want to do that. We actually want to prepin one to it, and then we need to put our caller outbound caller ID. This should overwrite everything, so you usually want everyone using a main number, and we're just going to put that right there and hit OK. So now we've set up the inbound outbound rule and the SIP registrar, and this phone should be able to make a call. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go full screen here and we're going to make a call. Now, right here, this is my phone. I don't have an app or anything loaded on it. I'm actually going to call my cell phone number from my desk phone. First, I'm going to go get a dial tone. All right, I put my phone number in. I did not put a one or anything before it. So let's see what happens. It should go ahead and add that one and look at that gorgeous number just coming right in hello can you hear that a little bit of an echo but i love it <laughs> that tells me the the inbound and outbound are good we have a successful voice path everything is set up as it should be here is the web client you have all your extensions usually this would be filled out with a lot more extensions I went ahead and grabbed the desktop app to install on my system here. And then it shows everything that we need to do. Do that. And then we just hit provision and say open. And it auto provisions everything. So we could do inner office chats here. We could schedule conference calls, which these are video conference calls. You can do full webcam so you don't have to pay for some weird janky service that my, may or may not be secure. This one is all in-house, which is great. You got your video conference, you have your contacts, you have your call history, which I can't click on because my cell phone's in there. Uh, you have your voicemails, switchboard. This is so powerful because you could easily use, let's say you're on a Mac or a Linux device, you could even use your browser for that to manage your phone. So that's everything with setting up a basic phone system. Again, check out that video if you want to do like an SBC or do a more complex setup with a Raspberry Pi, by all means go for that. However, for most people, I just recommend doing this. It's so cheap, so easy, and it is a far better solution than what probably most businesses are using these days as I love it. But with that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Big shout out to 3CX for partnering with me to make this as I loved revisiting PBXs. Uh, I did a lot of setups for a bunch of different businesses many years ago when I was a lead engineer for a satellite company. And it was just really nice revisiting this area of my career. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.